Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. It's hard to believe it's Wednesday already. And uh, we're going to continue looking at Daniel chapter 12, the final verses of it, which is part of our study of Daniel's last vision. Mostly, we always think about Daniel chapter 11 itself. And Daniel chapter 12 has lots of interesting details in it that we're going to look at. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the way that you work in our lives and that we can meet together in the morning and that we can receive of your spirit in fellowship and love towards one another and and, um, towards all those that uh, you bring our way. We just pray, Lord, that you can use us in ministering to others and that the things that we study will be helpful in strengthening our faith and confidence in you. And that it will, that we can participate in this work of building up your church in these last days and giving a warning to the world and to Seventh day Adventists. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. And so yesterday we looked at, to me, one of the most, you know, there's lots of amazing things that we find. But the fact that we could take Daniel 12, verse 7, the time, times, and a half, and add up the Hebrew numbers in the way we did. So 4150, that's time, times 4150, same Hebrew word, but we doubled that one. So we tripled 4150. We added 2677 to it, the half, and we got a period of time, which would be 1260 years if we took it as months so it was uh the number we had was one five one two seven is when we added that all together we divided it by 12 and we got 120 1260 years and seven months now the, the seven months as a symbol of course uh we understand that the number seven Aran's pointed out there in the chat um that the decimal there five eight three he says it could represent 538, and, that, and that's definitely possible. That's going to be the end point for the 40, the, the 1260 years that's in Daniel 12.7, uh, and the beginning point for the uh, 1260 that's in Daniel 7.25, so the time times and the dividing of time. So, so maybe that's what that refers to. So 583 could represent 538. But seven months by itself, of course, is significant and then we have um you know we divided it into uh hours so that would end up being 630 days in seven hours and so that's interesting in and of itself 630 of course is half of 1260 because 24 is twice of 12 and then we also looked at uh 1440 minutes which gives us 10 days 12 hours and seven minutes and and the thing is this is in Daniel 12, verse 7. And so that uh, the 12, verse 7 there is interesting. And also in the number itself, 15127, we can see uh, 12 and 7. So it's kind of interesting we get this 12, 7. And the 12, 7, of course, on the 1843 chart, 12 times 7 is 84, times 30 is 2520. So, so lots of interesting uh, symbols that exist within that verse. Now, we had also reviewed just how these, uh, in verse two, which was going back, the everlasting life and the shame and everlasting contempt and how we could connect that to my birthdays in this, in this way. And then we did the same thing with the other number. What was that one? The last one. So that's going to be the word Daniel. Where was that? And shut up, right? So we put, uh, where is that now? Yeah. So, uh, five, six, four, zero. Oh, Daniel, shut up. And, um, so shutting up the words of the seal of the, and seal of the book, right? So we, we added those together and we got a span of time that goes from nine eleven to, to just zoom here. Yeah. So, yeah, from, Where's this? Yeah, from 9-11 to February 6, 2028. And so that seems significant that we could connect 9-11 to my birthday with that number. Is that the one? No, that's not the one. Where's the 
yeah, February, oh, February 6, 2001. So this is the other one. Yeah. So from my birthday on February 6, 2001 to July 31st, 2021. That's the one. So that's Daniel shut up. Now it brings us to the Julian date, July 18, 2021. Right. So this is going to be one year, 365 days after the July 18th date that we got from the book of Ezekiel. And then the number 7480 is um, 187 times 40. So I thought that was interesting as well. So these we have all these things that continue to point to July 18th as a symbol. And 187 times 40, well, that's July 18th, 2020. You just add the 2020 to get the 40. I mean, it's one way you could do that. So, so very interesting symbols. Now, as far as what these things mean, we take these symbols and we're trying to relate what's happening historically in Daniel chapter 12 and seeing how that th- this connects to the present truth understanding or application of this history. Now, if we think about the shutting up of the book of Daniel historically, what exactly shuts up the book of Daniel? What exactly I mean, it says here he's going to say they shut up and seal the words, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Now, what is it that shuts up the book of Daniel? Nope. Because it's going to be unsealed. So we need to know what unseals it uh, as well. But why is it shut up? What does that mean? This is, this is an important point, and we're going to spend a bit of time on it. So I want people to think about it and make comments if you have any ideas okay well, so I think, a lot of things, I think a lot of things are shut up to folks who don't want to want to spend the effort and time to to analyze them to try to comprehend them and maybe they're not watching the signs of the times around them so things are shut up to them because they just don't comprehend what's going on or they don't want to well that's true but you're, you're talking more in a practical sense i'm talking more in a symbolic sense so we look at this word shut up Shatham, this computer always, you know, I've got to switch screens anyway. To stop up, shut up, keep close, right? Uh, to stop up, shut up, keep close. A secret uh, is a part of participle. To be stopped, to stop up. Okay. Now, so that's the, the definition of the word. So it's translated well in the King James. First occurs in Genesis 26, 15. For all the wells which the father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines, had stopped them or shut them up and filled them with earth. And, of course, we also have it, Daniel 8, 26. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told, is true. Wherefore, shut thou up uh, the vision, for it shall be for many days. Right? So we have it in Daniel 8, 26. Um, and... And this is kind of interesting in Ezekiel 28, verse 3. It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret. That word secret is shut up, that they can hide from thee. So that's kind of interesting. In in Ezekiel 28, verse 3, uh, this is the prophecy against the king of Tyre, the prince of Tyrus. It's kind of interesting here. So uh, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, and there is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures." By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. And they shall bring thee down into the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in in the midst of the seas. So we know that there's going to be this lament, and we, we recognize that this is a reference to Satan, 
Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone is thy covering, the sardis, topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes, which prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. You know, so lots of different things. We're familiar with these verses. And of course, this is a lament over the king of Tyre or Tyrus. But he's said to be wiser than Daniel. And there is no secret that they cannot hide from thee. So, well, who would the they be, though? Hide from thee? What do you mean? No, it says there's no secret that they can hide from you. And I'm asking, talking who about the, the, they of the, king, the king of Tyre or the prince of Tyre. Yeah, I know it's talking about the king of Tyre, but then it says there's no secret that they can hide from me. Oh, so who? Well, who his would, people who can't anybody. hide anything from him. God's people can. I mean, yeah, I know I, Satan doesn't know everything that's going on in my mind. Well, it just means that no one can, right? So it's mm. right. So no one, you know, they could have just said, no one can hide a secret from you. You could easily translate it that well, way. Well, if you're on Satan's side, yeah, your life is open to him pretty much. But if you're on God's side, I mean, just the fact that Satan trips himself up constantly, because I watch Satan's people, and I mean, how many lies can they tell? They're all lot like they'll speak sentences to you, and, and you know, can see how they're contradicting themselves and i call them on it constantly <laughs> okay so the point here is that daniel is referenced as well as the shut up right the secret the 5640 secret so that means that nothing that is shy, shut up can hide from no one can um, shut up anything to hide it from you so i mean this is really talking about the prince of tyre of course we apply it to satan Right, because it is also Satan. But this comparison to Daniel, I think, is interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as uh, like literally, what does this say? Thou art wiser than Daniel. I'm just looking at some. Not wiser in the sense, of course, of knowing the things of God. It's just that you'd have more information than Daniel does. You have more access to surveillance and all kinds of traffic, which gives you the information that you use against. Everybody, not only your own people, but God's people. Yeah, well, in this case, you know, wiser, wiser has to do with skill or cunning, right? We're not talking about right. God's wisdom here. It's just Satan is obviously skillful and cunning. It's also so it's just has to do with, I with intelligence, right? Because um, the word wise, that is intelligence, skillful or artful, cunning, subtle, right? So it's... Uh, used as this for the serpent as well. So if you look up this word wiser, you're going to see it in, oh, let me see. It's not the same word, but it's, uh, you know, the Egyptian, the wise men of Egypt, right? So they're wise, mm -hmm. right? Things like that. Wise in their own, their own conceit. Yeah, or, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. This is Second Samuel 13, 3. Um, the son of Shimea, David's brother, and Jonadab was very subtle man, was a very subtle man or very wise or very crafty or, you know, whatever, artful. So this is what's being said. And, but the idea is that, that there is these things that are shut up that can't be hidden. So, so obviously Satan can look into the things of God and he can see the prophecies. He can, he's definitely better at studying this stuff than we are. Right. As far as the information, he, did, he just can't apply it in a godly manner. Right. So people can have all kinds of knowledge. Knowledge doesn't save you just because I know something or explain something really well and have insight in that way. Sometimes we think that's a substitute for obedience, but it isn't. OK, so well, Jesus we said sanctify them through thy, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And that's how we're sanctified. And Satan doesn't have access to that power. So what we have here is we're going to have the wise. Now, this is, of course, a different uh, word. The wise that shall shine is the brightness of the firmament. That is, they're going to be turning many to righteousness. 
as the stars forever and ever. So they're giving light. They're, they're teachers. That's, that's the idea here that they're going to uh, shine, that is, they're going to admonish, and they're going to turn people to righteousness. But then it says, but thou, O Daniel, seal up the words, or shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. So the question going back to what I'm asking here is what actually this means that they're shut up. And it, and, and I'm talking about more in a symbolic sense, not in the practical sense. Obviously, they're closed to those who aren't open to follow God. But the question is, what shuts up or seals this book? Because it's going to be open, that is, it's going to be unsealed at the time of the end. So if we think about what unseals it, we can understand what seals it. So so what unseals the book of Daniel? Revelation chapter 5. What unseals the book of Daniel? And you can look at uh, Revelation chapter 10 as well. The Lion of Judah. Okay, the line of the tribe of Judah, which is described as being a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes that is as it had been slain. So it's going to be the death of Christ on the cross that unseals the book of Daniel, partly. Now we know in Daniel chapter 9, it talks about the 70 weeks, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness. And to seal up vision and prophecy. So the vision there is the chazon. And uh, the prophecy, sometimes it says the prophet, it's Nabi. You know, uh, the Hebrew word 5030. And of course, anoint the most holy. So one of the things about the 70 weeks is it seals up the vision. So when we look at, at Daniel 12 verse 4, It's going to be that same word and seal the book. So these words are shut up or sealed in a sense through prophecy itself. So that a prophecy is given and then it's the prophecy that unseals it. But it's connected. The shutting up of the book is connected to the teaching of righteousness. So that there isn't a disconnect between verse 3 of Daniel 12 and verse 4. So they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. So we know that the book is unsealed in 1798. Many shall run to and fro, a Hebrew idiom for study, right, to search God's word, and knowledge shall be increased. So we know that we're going to have that. Knowledge is the knowledge of prophecy. It's not talking about there being airplanes and trains and computers at the time of the end, like you see in evangelistic series. It's not that kind of knowledge. It has to do with with an understanding of God's word. Okay. Now, if we're going to, to put this into the present truth application, the only numbers that we have interpreted in the Strong's numbers are this Daniel and shut up. Now, the word Daniel itself being 1840, that's kind of where we had finished off yesterday. We definitely can see that that this is a reference to August 11th, 1840, but also to 9-11. Can we see that, that the name Daniel here? Now, we could say, well, the name Daniel is all through the whole book of Daniel. So how can we just take the name Daniel here and say here it's a reference to August 11th, 1840? Well, it has to do with the context of the sentence itself. So, sure, everywhere the word Daniel is, you have the Hebrew number 1840. But we're taking this verse in its historical application, and then we're saying, what do the numbers in this sentence, in this verse, what do they connect us to symbolically? So Daniel's name here would connect connect us to August 11th, 1840. So, Just in the historical application, we can say that this is August 11th, 1840. Missed the U there in August. And in our application, then, this this is going to refer to 9-11 and also 11-9. So that would be the present truth application. So it connects us to our history, the unsealing of the book, the people that are waking up. So 1840, in this verse... Daniel's name attaches us to that 1840 date 
which attaches us to 9-11, which attaches us to 11-9. Can we accept that? Yes, I think so, because we're going through this process right now. Yeah, okay. Now, um, now we have symbols, of course, here that we, we address that often relate to time. Now, uh, just the word itself that is the word translated as shut up, 5640, so we've, we've attached that to Daniel and we have it as a span of time. But we can also attach it, um, so the, the number itself, uh, the significant divisors are 235 and 24. Now, 235 is the number of months in a metonic cycle. It's the number of years from 977 uh, to 742, for instance, as well. It represents 19 years as a symbol. His metonic cycle is 19 years in which there's 12 and 12 regular years and 12 embolismic years. So 12 leap years with an extra month. And that's why in, in 12 years, you would have, um, normally 12 times or 19 years, 19 years, you'd have 12 months, right? Normally in our calendar. And so that would be 228 months, right? So. 19 times 12, but because there's seven embolismic years, you get 235 months in on the biblical calendar. In the same period of time, you have 228 months on our calendar, right? 19 years. So, so that number 235 represents uh, the metonic cycle and 24, right? So 235 times 24, that it just is is you know can represent time as well so 235 represents time as far as the calendar in years a 19 year cycle and 24 represents the number of hours in a day so one thing we can say in the present truth application that we have time involved in that this time is shut up and it's what's going to be unsealed in our history well, we already know that. I'm just saying it's it's symbolized by the word shut up itself. So the word shut up has this characteristic. So I'm just going to put here it equals uh, 24 times 235. Symbols of the metonic cycle, 19 years, and 24 hours in a day. So we have all of those things that are, are symbolized in that. Now, that would be true as, as a symbol even in the historical application, but this is primarily in our time, so I'd put that in red. But that's really a present truth application of that symbol. Now, we have words, which is debar, in this case, dabarim, because it's plural. Then we have seal. So this word, we have sealing, and we have a sealing of a book. So this book is sealed up. We know it's the book of Daniel, and it's going to be unsealed at the time of the end. So couldn't we say then that the, the studies we're doing of Daniel now are the end time unveiling or unsealing of Daniel and we're the many that are running. They call us the many running to and fro and knowledge is being increased. So there's a parallel to when what happened before and what's happening now because this yeah. is all new, right? I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is a pioneer study here. Yeah, so we have to, we understand the historical application, and, and we're paralleling that, right? That's that's the idea. Now, this uh, so does that make sense, everybody? What what Angela said, what I said that that's how we're understanding this. We're looking at that this is dealing with historical is in the black, right? We understand already, you know, the Book of Daniel being unsealed, but we can see how it's 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 shut up, and we have the symbol which relates to our time, but it also relates. To that time, just in the in the more literal sense, just of the text itself. Okay, so so I'm just adding some of these numbers together. So we already had you know Daniel shutting up this book. Now we could take shut up and the words so one six nine seven, and if you add those together, you get five eight zero seven, which in uh, years is fifteen years. It's almost sixteen years. Um, just a bit short by yeah, 16 years and 328 days. So it's, you know, it's roughly 30, 37 days short. It's 37 days short. 27 is wait. 20, 
yeah, 30, 37 days short of 16 years. So I don't know, you know, if there's any place that we put that, but for now, I don't, I don't have a place. So we got, uh, seal the words or shut up the words. So I, I can't at this point, I don't know what to do with that number, whether it's significant or not. 5807. Is that right? No, I actually added it wrong. That's why. Uh, five, six, I knew something didn't make sense. Yeah. So the number is, yeah, plus one, six. Okay. That makes more sense now. So I go five, six, four, zero plus one, six, nine, seven. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be 7,337. That makes more sense. Okay. Now 7337. If Stephen was here, he'd have something to say about it. What What's the significance of 73 and 37? Anybody know? We can see it's chiastic. It's a mirror. Okay, they're chiastic. One is these are numbers that um, people pick. They're the most common numbers to pick if you're going to have people pick. Because one is they're both uh, primes, Right. So I'm trying to remember everything that, that Stephen taught me about these numbers. So 37 is the 12th prime and 73 is the 21st prime. So what's 12 times 21? 252, right? So, so that's interesting in and of itself, right? Just the, the fact that these are prime numbers and that one's the 12th and one's the 21st prime. Now Stephen had some charts dealing with 73 and 37 and i just don't know where those are you know i don't know i know i have them somewhere on my computer but i don't know where they are so maybe Stephen, when he joins us again he can go through that but we can see that what we have in that word shut up the words is we have this number 7337 so i think that's pretty interesting um so i need to make a note of that so we keep we keep finding these these symbols and i don't think they're i mean all together they mean something by themselves you know we, we could probably uh dismiss some of them as coincidences but uh together we would have to take them as evidence well, the spirit of prophecy tells us that christ will be revealed in symbols and figures and we're finding that out more and more yeah so there, there's actually a lot to do with the 37 and the 73. So I know that, that Stephen will enlighten us at uh, some point, or, or at least I'll get his study together if he doesn't show up. But we won't do that today. I'll try to get that ready for tomorrow. So anyway, that, that becomes to me very significant, that shutting up the words is in this symbol of 73 and 37. And 73 and 37, these are, are prime numbers that people will choose, and I'm trying to remember what, what the reason is. It's like, because I've watched a video on it uh, recently. I can't remember if it was Veritasium. I think it was Veritasium. We talked about it. Um, so I'll have to get that information tomorrow, uh, exactly why these numbers are significant. In a sense, they're, they're picked as by people, if you ask them a number, to pick a number between 1 and 100 for some reason, and they're most likely to pick 37. And, and 73, but I can't remember the, what, what the reason is. It has to do with the unlikeliness of the numbers. Uh, maybe that, because there are prime numbers, but there's something about these numbers that people intuitively recognize. So anyway, um, I can't remember what it is. Now, so we got this, uh, the shutting up, shutting up. So Daniel shut up, Daniel shut up the words, and then we have, uh, seal the book right so uh and, and the one thing i didn't do here is take like this as a span of time as well so i mean i could look at the span of time and like if i went to you know 9 11 and i typed in 7337 what would i come up with i come up with october 13th 2021 and we know october 13th is already a date we have in our lines whether that's significant or not in 2021 i don't know but it is a symbol because we know in 2018 it's a symbol. And it, of course, it's a symbol, you know, the fall of Babylon's October 13th, 539. And we have uh, Brother David died on October 13th, 1990. 
We have the October 13th dealing with the miracle of Fatima, things like that. So, so October 13th is a symbol, but whether that connects to this seven, 7,337 days, I don't know whether that's significant or not. Just trying to come up the date, see if there's anything that connects. Yeah, so I don't see anything else that, that connects readily with that. Now, then we have the seal of the book, right? So we have 2856 and 5612. So that's six, eight, four, six, eight. That would be if we counted from 9-11 and bring us to November 17th, 2024, which is the 15th day of the eighth month on the biblical calendar. So, so it has a symbol uh, dealing with the 15th day of the eighth month. And we had already looked at August 15th, I believe, in uh, 2030 or something like that. So, I mean, it is a symbol. So, so maybe that has something to do with it. Now I'm going to get a couple of other things here. Now, the verse itself for, for this whole verse, it, the gamatic or the, the strongs, the lexical number is 61617. Uh, that's what it adds up to, uh, which is a period of 168 years. So we, we could try to connect that somewhere. When I look at that number, I think about, you know, Millerite history. So if we go from the first day of the first month in 1844, 61617 brings us to December 31st, 2012. So it brings us to the last day of 2012. That's 10 days after the Mayan date, uh, the failed prediction occurred. So it's kind of interesting. 61617 brings us to December 31st, 2012 from the first day of the first month in 1844. Now, if we go from October 23rd and we go backwards, we could go from the end of October 23rd, 1844. So that's the day after October 22nd. And that would bring us to Kelly's disfellowship on July 7th, 2013. So that would span that period of time. So Kelly, Kelly Ross is the only person I know of disfellowshipped in Canada regarding the 2520. And July 7th, of course, is a symbolic date, as is 13, symbol of rebellion. And, and those two come into contact. Uh, six plus seven, it re represents rebellion. It it's symbolizes the great controversy. So maybe, maybe that's where we place it. It connects, uh, the day. It's the span of time between the day when Hiram Metzen has his vision and, and to the beginning of the day when Kelly Ross is going to be disfellowshipped. That would be the span of time. I don't know. Should we, should we take that verse primarily there or do we like it brings us to the end of 2012, which, which also connects us then to the beginning of 2013, right? To this, to this year. So, so the symbol there is we have this 13th Baktun, um, on December 21st, 2012. That's 13 Baktuns have passed, which is 1,872,000 days from the start of the Mayan calendar. And people thought that's when the world was going to end. It didn't, uh, didn't end that time at that time, right? I met Heidi that day, but 10 days later would be the end of 2012. So you can see how the 12 and the 13 come together there. And even 31 is a reverse of 13. So you got 2012, you got the 12th month, December, and then you have the 31st, which represents the transition to the 13th. So it has to do with a type of a symbol of rebellion, which, you know, is, doesn't mean we're the rebels, right? It just means that there's a symbol of rebellion there. Okay. This great controversy issue. So either way, whether we start with April 19th or we start at the end, Hiram Metzen's vision, uh, didn't Snow write a letter on December 31st, 1840 or something? No. We don't have, he, he gave it, you're thinking of, uh, Samuel Snow gave his personal testimony on December 31st, 1843 at uh, the Boston Tabernacle. 
So, so December 31st shows up as a symbol in 1843. It's the end of the Jew, the, our year 1843. And you can see how the end of our year in 1843 connects with April 19th, right? The beginning of the Jewish year 1844. And that marks the end of our year, if we count six, 61,607 days. From April 19th, it brings us to December 31st, 2012, right? Does, does that make sense, that connections that we're making here? So we're connecting this December 31st with the end of the Jewish year, 1843, right? And, and then we can connect that as a symbol if we go from the beginning of the Jewish year, 1844, and we count 61,617 days, and that brings us to the end of the year 2012, which is December 31st. Is that, that making sense? So that period of time is 169 years, right? So if we go from Samuel Snow giving his personal testimony on December 31st, 1843, and the next day is when he's going to decide to present his views that Christ is coming back in the fall of 1844. And, and it's not going to be till the February, uh, 16th date that he's going to write the letter, which is published February 22nd in 1844, right? His first views about the 10th day of the seventh month in 1844. So we have 169 years, right? So technically, you know, it's 160, you know, if we count that period of 61,617 itself, right? So we're going to have that span of time in between there. You know, it's 168 years and 255 days, just the number itself, right? So that difference there has to do with the number of days from January 1st to April 19th. So that uh, makes the 365 to complete the 19, or, or complete the, the 69th year, 169th year. So can we see that that's connected? To me, that seems that seems like a connection. That would be the strongest connection for me. So I'm just going to make this comment about Verse four. Okay. So we're going to go April 19th, 1844 to December 31st, 2012, which relates to, thanks, that relates to December 31st, 1843. I'll just put here snow. Okay. So that will remind me, I'll write it better footnotes and explanations in my notes. So I think that that uh, that lexical sum of that verse is important. Okay, so uh, whether we want to deal with all these different numbers. Okay, time at the end we've dealt with before. Any other thoughts on this? So I don't I don't have any other thoughts about though this verse. They're trying to find so the book's sealed until the time of the end. So we know it's unsealed, right? So the time of the end there is 1798, right? We'd have to say. So the time of the end, 1798, which relates to 1989. Right? So we're going to know that it's going to be 1798, which, which equals 1989 in our history. Now, technically, I could be more for precise. I'd like to mark February 15th, 1798, and November 9th, 1989. Oops. Right, so there we have the present truth application. So we know the Book of Daniel is going to be unsealed in 1798, that time period, and it's unsealed in our time period. Now, we got many running to and fro, so that's going to be in regard to the study so we have 7227, and we could add 7751 to that. So if we do that, we get uh, 14,978. Now, that's an interesting number, okay? So, uh, so I'll show you uh, what I did. So you can see it there, but I'm just going to do it again. Um, so we're going to go 7227 plus 7751. So that's many shall run to and fro. We get this number. Now, when I see a number like that, I know that we have the day, that, the time that the manna fell, falls is 14,587 days. So if I subtract 
14,587 days, I'm going to get 391. So we can see that this relates to an understanding of the 391. So can we put that, and, and this is where I would have put it anyway, but many shall run to and fro, references 9-11. Oops, I don't know what I did there. So in the present truth application, the many running to and fro has to do with the people who wake up at 9-11 and they're studying God's word. Now, they're studying God's word before 9-11 as well, but, but that would refer to what 9-11 does. It gives us this understanding. So knowledge shall be increased. So here we have some other numbers, 1847 and 7235. So if I add those together, I get 9,082. Now, this is going to, of course, be, if we divide it by 365 and a quarter, you're going to see it's going to be 24 years and 24 years and 316 days. So, you know, to put 24 years somewhere in our line, you know, if we go from 9-11, it's going to obviously bring us like to 2026 somewhere. If we go, um, you know, to 1989, you know, it brings us like to September 21st, 2014, which is, I don't know anything in particular about September 21st, 2014. If it brought us to October 21st or October 20th, 20, 2014, a month later, then that would be the camp meeting in Arkansas. Kelly was there and uh, some others. And that's the one where I'm going to present chronology. At least I think you were there, Kelly. Yeah, you were. But but that's a month short, roughly speaking. So maybe it has something to do with something else. But just as a span of time, I don't find any real significance in it at this at this point. It doesn't mean that it isn't. And that's the knowledge shall be increased. So I have that for the whole verse, of course. We have something, right? But not for knowledge shall be increased. Now, so the number itself, 9082. So interesting number here. So this is uh, number empire. This is the one I use to analyze numbers. So I put 9082 in there. The interesting thing that jumps out first, what do people see? So it's got the factorization, 2 times 19 times 239. You've seen that interesting. It shows all the different divisors. There's eight of, eight of them. But the sum of the divisors is 14,400. Would we consider that significant? Now, that's the number of minutes in 10 days, right? So, interesting in that regard. That's, that's the only thing I see interesting about the number itself. Are we going to take that number as significant? For the sum of the divisors of the number. We've done it lots of times that we've looked at the sum of the divisors. Does that tell us something? So, if we're going to take, I'll do this, uh, I'll put a different reference, and that's going to be H is the number, yeah, 7227 and 7751. And if you <clears throat> times, nine times eight times two would bring you to 144, 144, whatever. <laughs> anyway, 144 is in there. Okay, so that's interesting. So 72 times two is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, so nine, so it's 9,082, the sum of the divisors is one four four hundred up against in there comma and the log of the number is nine eleven Aaron you put it there yeah e log log me Nat natural log of that yeah so the log e equals nine point one one exactly or is it yeah there's some more decimals after that. Mm -hmm. Because it's an irrational number, so you're going to have a lot more decimals. But 9.11 is the log. Um, so that's that's significant. And, um, yeah, so I think that's probably quite a bit for that uh, phrase. Knowledge shall be increased for the 144,000 regarding 9.11. And the point is that I was trying to make, you know, we got this 9.11, knowledge shall be increased. So you've got... The time of the end, November 9th, many shall run to and fro, so they're going to study from 1989 to 911, and their knowledge will be increased. Now, part of the knowledge being increased, though, 
is also going to connect us to to July 18th. So if we look at, at Millerite history, people are going to run, the knowledge is going to be increased, is going to be like in the history. So this is the present truth application. So I don't know exactly, you know, knowledge is increased in that whole period of time. In Millerite history, it's increased in our time. But I'm saying it points to that date, July 18, 2020. And let me see. Right, so I put these footnotes in there. And you see here. But then we just want to deal with 77. Five one by itself. Now we could we could look at each of them individually. So if I go from nine eleven, it brings me to November seventh, twenty twenty two, and we've already done that before. So that's seven two two seven from nine eleven. So it brings us to Jeff's birthday in twenty twenty two. So I don't. I mean, it brings us is seven seven five one brings us to December first, twenty twenty two. So. 7727. Oh, I see. What did I do? I did it wrong. I knew I did something wrong. Hang on, I gotta go back here. So 911, 7227. Okay, so that one brings me to June 25th, 2021. 7227. So that's what I did wrong. And then the other one, 7751. Yeah, so that's gonna bring me to December 1st, 2022. So whether that's significant or not, I don't know of any significance of that. It's a Thursday. doesn't mean anything to me right now. Let's run to and fro. Okay, so I've got 7235. That's the other one I wanted to look at. Okay, so 7235 um, brings us to from 9-11 to July 3rd, 2021. So again, you know, we, we look at some of these, these words by themselves, good, compare them to 9-11, see where they bring us to doesn't necessarily yield anything significant. Unless you look at the seven and the three there, and I said 73 or 37, and yeah. seven times three equals one. Yeah, but that's not a strong a strong symbol by itself, right? I mean, you know, if you start doing that, like any date, you can almost make into significant. That's so true. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, you start having too many symbols and everything's a symbol. But... When something like 37 and 73 are together, like in 7337, then that is significant because you've got two symbols together that yield, you know, 2520 plus other things. So um, as a symbol, just the number itself, uh, 7235 increased. You know, it yields this symbol. So if you look at the factorization, it's uh, 5 times 1447. Now, in that you have 5, the symbol of the foolish and the wise. You have the 144,000 symbol, and you have a seven symbol, which represents the 2520. I mean, you could do that with it. So I'm just saying it's, it, you wouldn't primarily use this in this way, but you can see that it, it, it has that, that ability, right, to, to show you some of those symbols. So I don't see anything else about it, but that's just the word increased by itself. It's, it's, it's usually putting words together that matters the most, right? Putting Strong's numbers together in a verse in the context of a verse. So the main thing that we can see is that this, this becomes a line, right? Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, right? So we have the message of the seven, seven days, seven, seven, seven days, starting on November 9th, 2019. And it's going to symbolize November 9th, July 18th, and December 25th, 2021 the end of the 7-7 seven, seven structure. And then it says, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. So the wise are those who understand these things, right? Now, we could probably put a little bit more in there, but we already have them sort of in the footnotes connecting to our history. This connects to the message, to me personally, that is the message of July 18th. And then, um, but thou, O Daniel, right? So we got this connection to Millerite history when, this stuff is sealed up, and to our history, to 9-11, to 11-9, shut up, right? We see that they're shut up or sealed, gives us all these symbols of time, 24 hours, 235 months, that, that we already understood, and then shut thou up the words, so that was going to give 7337, and gives us the 252 symbol, the 21 and the 12, and then... And many shall run to and fro. That's going to give us 9,082. The sum of the divisors is 14,400. And the natural log is 9, 
11, right? So all of these things connect to the symbols of this message. And the whole verse itself, verse 4, is going to give us this symbol that connects Millerite history to our history, basically to the history addressing what happens in 2013. So lots of symbols in there. And we're just going to look at this one. Okay, so when we look at the next verse, which so we're just going to start looking at this. And I'm not sure I did, this is the line from yesterday. Just this word looked. Now we know that this is half of 144,000, right? 7,200. So you double that, you get 144,000. So he looked and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side, the bank of the river, and the other on that side, the bank of the river. So there's something in this verse as well that we're going to notice. Obviously, it has the name Daniel there, 1840 as well. But he's going to always be there when his name's mentioned. It's always going to be giving you that year, 1840. But I, Daniel, looked and behold, there stood other two, one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. So one of the things we have here is this doubling. This is a chiasm. So you got uh, 7,200, which is half of 144,000. Now, uh, 7,200 is the number of, of hours in 50 days, right? So because the number of hours in 100 days, or is that minutes? Yeah, minutes, right? So if you have 50 days times 1440, okay, that's... Yeah, so 7,200, it's not half of 144,000, it's a half of, so that's the number of, of minutes in five days. Yeah, because it, it would just be 14,400. Okay, I, see, I thought there was something wrong there. Okay, so 14,400. So 7,200 relates to, and, and in the, the Mayan calendar, uh, so I'll show you this here. So I'm going to go to the calendar here. So this is the Mayan calendar down at the bottom. And so you can see this is uh, December 21st, 2012. That's where the Mayan calendar turns over from to the 13th back to. And then um, if I was going to put here 7,200 days, it's going to bring me to 2032, September 7th. But that's not really the main point I wanted to point out. I wanted to point out that in the Mayan calendar, see how you get this digit change? So that was a zero. So this digit, each one represents 7,200 days. And this number goes up to 20. So if I kept adding 7,200 days, the next one would be, it would change to number two. You know, so if I put this at 19, you can see uh, it's going to be uh, 2,387 20, 20, July 9th. But I just want to show you that the next back tune, all I would do is add 7,200 days, and it's going to go to the next back tune. You can see there 14. See that there? So that's because this each digit here represents 7,200 days. Each digit here represents 360 days. Each digit here represents 18 days. This one only goes up to 18. And each digit here, no, pardon me, each digit here represents 20 days. Let me think, how does that work? Yeah, 20. So I'm just going to do this here. So I'm going to add 20. Yeah, so that one adds 20. And then if I keep, if I make this, I don't think this one I can't do is 19. Yeah. So this one goes up to 17. Yeah, each one represents 20 days. But it only goes up to 17. So if I add another 20 days, see how this one goes to two. So this one will go up to, to 19, right? And then once it gets to 19, it moves to a one here. And then this one goes up to 17. Once it gets to 18, it moves to a one here. And that's how you get 18 times 20 equals 360, right? So if you have 20, this goes up to 20, this goes up to 18. 18 times 20 is 360. And then 360 times 20 gives you 7,200, and then 7,200 times 20 gives you 144,000. So if you have this here, like that, that represents 144,000 days. So if I went here and I subtracted 144,000, 0, 0, 0, 
I would go right back to the start of the mind calendar where everything's zero. Right? Makes sense? Just to understand the mind calendar. So when I look at the number 7,200, it, to me, it just reminds me of the mind calendar is my point. Okay, so we're going to close there with prayer, and we'll come back to this tomorrow. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness and love and for the study today. And I pray for each person, help them in their personal needs, our health, our spiritual well-being, and uh, our family and friends and those that we care about and that we minister to. Give us wisdom and understanding. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.